Hello and welcome, RC Shim Mendanga. Today you will see my review of the Flywoo Hexplorer. And here first, let's start with this unboxing and overview of parts. You get some props, not too many, but that's not a drone you should crash too often. A nice set of screws, little 3D printed part. Oh, it's for the crossfire, yeah. And a gift. Tubings for your receiver, a nice little velcro, and notice that you should download the manual. While this thing is incredibly lightweight for an hexacopter, you would have a hard time flying it below 250 grams, maybe with a tiny battery. Here's the whistle, there's a capacitor, which is important on DJI builds, on all builds, but especially on DJI. There we have the tiny 16 by 16 millimeter stack with some spacer in between or on top. It, this again uses USB micro. There's the little hex ESC FlyWoo Bluetooth module, which made it easy for me to connect with the SpeedyB app directly on my phone. Didn't have to use USB. And here I have the little TBS Nano Crossfire receiver. This is the Insta SMO cable. And I run the antenna down there and it will be screwed in place in the front with this little part, TPU part that it comes with. Excited. That is a little bit annoying. Bye trying to turn it off maybe i shortened it i don't know i don't see any damage possible to turn it off now so you see the little button on the lower left side and you see the, the damage or the scratches i made with trying to poke the button i think it's important that you remove one of those plastic stripes so you can access the button more easily. You have to press this button. Each time you disarm the copter, it will start beeping on you. And yeah, as you've seen the last time I tried to disable it, it beeped in a continuous beep for like a few hours. I let it sit there and drain the battery, but then it was gone and it was somehow reset. So don't panic and cut the wires, but rather like cover it with some tape so it's more silent. Give it maybe in a fire protective battery bag if you're considering the, the battery, but it's not a large battery. And let it get empty over the course of a day. This is what it does if you don't disarm the beeper after 30 seconds after you disconnect the battery or it like crashed and then disconnected the battery. Okay, get it in the air. This is sweet. Very nice. And I love the fact that I have the Insta to record my ground station footage. Okay, let's, let's do a little test run. Oh, this is sweet. Yes, the front props are very much in the view. But I don't care too much about it, actually. Image is fantastic and sharp as expected. Can I fly it indoors? Well, 
Uh, to be honest, I don't think I will make it out alive. Oh yes, I do. Over traumatization. And I could come in, yes. So yes, it can be the nice exploration style. Somehow I don't have an amp reading. I'm not too sure if it's just set up wrong or if it doesn't have an amp meter. After three flights with different batteries, funny they are 100, 200 and 300 grams heavy, I used between 5 and 7 amps of an average. With a 200 gram battery I flew more acrobatic style. That's why 2 and 300 gram have the same efficiency it seems. <laughs> but it's quite efficient. So yeah, the tune is very nice. I wouldn't want to change anything. Maybe the rates if I would want to fly it more acrobatic, but for cruising it's perfectly fine. And it doesn't even prop wash because it has more than enough stability. Out of the box. So let me know what do you want to see in the review of the Insta360 X2. I will use it as often as I can, of course, for occasions like this year. There is a funny story as to how I got it. And I'm willing to tell the story in the review video. <laughs> Not today. So, man, I have an 850 battery in there. Flying seven minutes now. And I'm getting bored. <laughs> what happens if you throw in a really large battery? I love the idea that I can also carry a GoPro on it. See if the missus is still in the office. The screen is still on. Is she working? We'll see about this. Oh, it beeps. Okay. Low voltage beeper is coming off at under 14 volts, which is about right. Very nice. So this little 854S is now down to 14.7 volts after recovering, but it was a solid 10 minutes. Awesome. I used the Bluetooth enabled SpeedyB app to reset the voltage alarms on the copter, which is very, very nice. Don't have to pull out any cables. Ah, no. The DJI voltage thingy uses the set alarm from your beta flight controller. Did you know this, guys? I didn't know. That's nice. So. Now my, my warning voltage is set to 3 volts. Minimum is set to 2.8. It can really be flown nice and dynamically. Yeah, like 65 already feels very fast. So most of the times you will fly like 30 to 50 kph. It should be the efficient speed. Oh yeah, and the camera. Uh, that's the Cadix Pro, not the Nebula, but the Cadix Pro. And this is, but you've already seen this in other reviews once again. This Cadix Pro thing, I, I think I couldn't distinguish it from the original DJI cam. So maybe it's just the DJI cam. <laughs> it's a damn good image.
that is pretty schickel. Sorry, the, the image is, is really nice. Now 50 Mbit mode. And let's see if we catch a Mavic in the air. Let's see how stable is this bird in dives and faster dives. Flying it fast now, yeah, it's definitely nice as it's set up. Feels speedy and stable while diving. Something that the Chimera did not do so well. can do some mild acro with the bird, but it feels a bit heavy in the air. But you can have some fun with it. <laughs> 